In my last video, I recreated iconic anime effects in 3D software, and well, you guys loved it. So today, I'm going to redesign another iconic anime effect and see what it could look like in a 3D video game. Jujutsu Kaisen is probably my favorite modern anime out right now, and one of the coolest abilities in the show is something called Hollow Purple. This technique brings the concept of motion and reversal into reality. Purple is born from merging both infinites, blue and red, to produce an imaginary mass that rushes forth and absolutely ass blasts anything in its way. It's pretty gangster. To start this thing off, I created a simple Fresnel ball just like my last video. I decided to use Fresnel because it was going to keep the center of the ball always see-through, so that way I can add the effects that you're able to see inside the ball. Once that was looking passable, I decided to tackle the particles. In the anime, Hollow Purple has lots of little particles dancing around the ball as it grows, so I decided I wanted to try and replicate that effect. I tried a lot of different combinations, but I settled on a style where I spawned particles from a center point and then sucked them back into the middle. It created this cool cyclical effect that I ended up really liking. I also used a curl noise function to give the particles some random movement. In the last episode, I combined textures to make a swirling material effect. Hollow Purple is another version of a massive swirling energy ball, but this time, I wanted to push that to the next level. I wanted to make a texture that has lots of complexity and subtle movement, so instead of mixing two simple textures like I was doing in my last video, I tried adding even more textures to create a super complex material. What could go wrong? I set up my nodes and spent way too much time mixing and matching all my textures to create something that I was happy with. This is where I ran into my first problem. No matter what combination of textures I tried, the final material was too noisy. I was trying to add way too many textures into the mix, meaning no matter what I did, my material always looked like a steaming pile of awful. I was faced with a problem. How do I create a layered material that has complexity, but still retains recognizable shapes? And then, it hit me. I duplicated my material and put half of the textures into the new material. Then, in a stroke of genius, I duplicated the sphere and made it slightly smaller and put the new second material on the smaller sphere. And now I have two spheres with two much more readable textures. I really like it. The smaller sphere is kind of swirly and stormy, and the outside material is much stronger and feels like there's a secondary energy source swirling around it, especially when I add some color to it. This was a very important moment in my art journey because I realized that complexity does not always equal better. Nice, disaster averted. With the solid base established, I spent a little more time messing around with the textures and colors until I was happy with the feel of the materials. But the ball was still feeling a little empty. The Fresnel I was using to make the middle of the balls transparent looked great, but it was still a little too see-through, and an effect this powerful should be pulsing with energy. So I took a basic sprite and scaled it up to be slightly larger than the ball, and then I made it purple, so now it kind of looks like the ball is glowing. Then I duplicated the sprite and made him smaller to fake some glow on the inside of the ball. Now it looks like the inside of the ball is glowing. Wow, I'm doing things! And now our ability is starting to come together. Lightning is an effect I see all over anime shows. It's one of my favorite effects, and Hollow Purple has its fair share of lightning as well, so for my effect, I wanted to add some lightning to my ball. But there's one problem. I have no f***ing idea how to make a lightning effect. So I hopped on Procreate and spent the day learning how to draw lightning. It's actually pretty simple. I just drew a thick squiggly line and then used the eraser to chip away at the shape to make the lines appear a little sharper and jagged. And there we go, we got a lightning bolt. I highly recommend learning some sort of 2D drawing software. 
being able to hop into Procreate and quickly slap together some simple textures helps me create quickly and gives my work that special personal kiss. And since I use an iPad, I can practice drawing textures in front of the TV while I'm relaxing. It's pretty awesome. Anyway, once the lightning bolt was done, I imported it into Unreal Engine, turned it into a sprite, and then told it to start spawning randomly around the center of the ball. To sell the feel of real lightning, I gave the lightning a very short lifespan and gave it some subtle movement, making it grow away from the ball very quickly. And then I made it purple. I knew the effect itself wasn't perfect, so I made a mental note to improve the lightning later on in the project. I also added some rotating light beams off camera to make the energy ball feel more unstable and powerful. My ball was looking pretty gangster, but I was about to make another mistake. In the OG hollow purple clip, the energy ball is so violent that the winds whip up and fly around the ball in a swirling motion. Well, I wanted to try and remake that effect for myself. What could go wrong? In my last video, I made the Rasengan, and I gave it some wind effects by drawing a wind texture and scrolling it along a mesh that I hastily made in Blender. I thought that I could recreate the same effect and it would look just as good for this video. So I hopped into Blender and made a mesh that would sit on my ball. But after I set it up in Unreal Engine, I realized that it looked like It was horrible. The shape and pattern of the wind made no sense at all and felt extremely out of place. It was so bad in fact that I even considered scrapping the entire project and starting fresh. I was ready to give up. The next day, I decided to take the morning off and do a few tutorials to learn some new stuff. And that's where I learned something interesting that I could use in my project. I learned that if you set up your nodes like this, then you can create a really cool distortion effect for your materials. As I found out, this distortion effect is a very common way to give your textures another dimension, another angle of movement, and that gave me an idea. Remember how I said I'd come back to my lightning effect later? Well, now it's later. I decided to add this distortion effect to my lightning sprite, and the results were pretty awesome. My lightning now felt more like lightning. I was extremely happy. I felt like I had unlocked a key technique in my art moving forward and had just opened up so many more amazing possibilities for future effects. I now felt like I had a pretty solid grasp on how to make a cool lightning effect. Go me. With this new unexpected victory under my belt, I completely forgot about my imposing mental breakdown and got back to work. The rest of the day went surprisingly well. I wanted to make the ball feel like it was really charging up with power, so I got to experiment with adding more particles to my scene. At first, I made the particles spawn around the ball and then get sucked into the middle in a swirling, curly, vortex-like pattern. Now, the effect on its own looked pretty cool, but it ended up making the scene feel a little too noisy, a little too much going on. So I decided to simplify it so that the particles would just get sucked right into the middle in a straight line. I've learned my lesson from making things too complex. If you're building large effects and animations with lots of moving parts, keeping things simple is almost always better. Now you know. And now things are starting to come together and my final vision is starting to become more visible. In the original hollow purple effect, the ability has such a powerful pull that it starts sucking up the environment around it, ripping up trees and concrete in its wake. So I created a new emitter and started spawning tiny cube boys and tweaked my settings until they were spawning below the ball and getting sucked up into it. Already looking pretty good. But I know that eventually, I'm going to animate this ball to fly off into the distance. So I wanted the debris to sort of follow the ball as it moves across the landscape. This is where I learned about the difference between local space and world space. Up until now, I had been building my entire effect in local space, meaning that everything in this effect is always relative to the effect. When I move the ball one space to the left, everything moves one space to the left with it. Simple. But I didn't want my debris to do that. 
it would look strange if it perfectly moved with the ball. So I changed my debris to world space instead. And now when I move the ball, the debris moves around based on its position in the level while still getting sucked towards the ball. Pretty cool stuff. My effect was coming along nicely, but I've been avoiding doing something that I know I need to do. Animation. Now, don't get me wrong. I actually enjoy animation a lot, but I'm terrible at it. I struggle with the simplest poses, which sends me into fits of indescribable rage, but it's still so much fun. I love the challenge. So let's take our mannequin and give him a pose that would make Gojo proud. So I hopped into Cascadeur and tried to match the pose as accurately as I could to the reference. Let's call this guy Gerald. I really like using Cascadeur. The program naturally poses the body based on where you place other body parts. So it's very easy to get a quick pose up and running. I know eventually that I'd like to move over to Blender for animation, but the idea still terrifies me to my core. So that's a problem for another day. Once I finished my pose, I ported Gerald over to Unreal Engine and slapped him into my scene. This is where things really started to come together. It was time to start building out my final scene. So I created created a new level sequence and added the energy ball and Gerald. Then I animated the energy ball to shoot away from Gerald. In the anime, Hollow Purple has a charging phase where it quickly expands before being blasted across the terrain. So I hopped into my effects settings and animated each mesh and sprite to slowly grow over its lifetime. It was at this point I felt like I made it over the hill. The end of this project was in sight, and I thought it was going to be clear sailing from here on out. But I was wrong. In any big anime attack, there's often lots of smoke and dust swirling around. I wanted to add some smoke myself coming off of the ball. So I drew a really simple smoke texture and then turned it into a material and then made it scroll from left to the right. Pretty simple. But this material needed a shape to take. So I hopped into Blender again and made a huge custom triangle shape and then connected the material to the mesh and placed two of these new fancy smoke meshes on either side of the ball. Then I created a simple opacity mask to make the material fade out at the edges and bottom to make it feel more seamless. I wanted the effect to give off actual light in the scene, so I attached a simple point light to the effect. So now wherever the effect goes, the light goes with it. Well, look at that. Turning the light into a deep purple really made it feel like the effect was glowing with intensity. I love it. Then I placed the smoke in my scene and I kept it hidden until the moment where the ball shoots out. Now the smoke appears when I want it to, but the ball just flies away on its own. So I stuck the smoke to the ball, and now the smoke always stays attached to the effect. All right, now we're starting to cook a little bit. I really like how this is coming together so far. The lighting and camera angle give this animation another level of oomph that I think was missing and the ball flying away with the smoke trails is super satisfying. After that, I wanted to see how the animation looks with some camera shake, so I made a simple camera shake function that slowly rumbles the ball as it's charging and starts shaking violently as the energy ball is released. I know it doesn't look perfect, but I'll tweak it as we go. Now, I could have stopped there. I have a pretty cool effect, but I wanted to keep pushing to see how far I could take my mediocre skills. I've also had this nagging feeling in the back of my brain. That horrific wind texture I made was bouncing around in my mind, taunting me worse than my fifth grade bully did. I knew I had to give it another shot. So I came up with a new plan. I hopped once more into Blender and made a huge cone. Then I twisted the cone so that it sort of spirals in towards the center. Then I brought it into Unreal Engine. At first, I was a little worried because I thought I was going to have to make a whole new material, but I had a thought. What if I repurposed a material that I've already made? So I decided to test this by putting one of my sphere materials into the mesh, and by pure absolute luck, it looks pretty awesome. So I duplicated it, made the texture white, and slapped it onto my cone. 
laziness prevails once again. And then just like the point light and the smoke, I attached it to the energy ball in my scene. This is exactly what I was looking for. Instead of making seams of wind as I tried before, having a storm of swirling wind that gets sucked into the center of the ball looked way better than my first attempt. I also wanted to add more lightning, so I drew another custom lightning sprite, slapped my new lightning material onto it, and to make the lightning stand out from the ones already coming off the ball, I just made them a slightly darker purple color. Then I spawned these huge lightning bolts all over the scene so it looks like lightning is striking all over the place. I actually love this effect. Things were coming together smoothly, but the scene was still feeling a little naked. So I decided to add more environmental VFX. I created some more QB boys to spawn around the character and fly away really quickly towards the camera, so it looks like more rocks are flying around everywhere. Then for some movement and detail, I added purple sparks to fly away as well. Now when the energy ball is launched, it looks like the ground is getting ripped up as the ball flies away. Most of Jujutsu Kaisen scenes take place in the city, so I added some huge rectangles and made a super hyper-realistic city block. In fact, it looks so real, you can't even tell the difference from a real city. Now my scene is properly framed and has some interesting stuff going on in the background. You go, Glen Coco. At this point, I started feeling stuck again. I had almost everything in place, but the effect was still missing that punch when the blast takes off down the street. So I added more animation to the camera to really feel the emphasis of the impact, and I added a small time dilation effect to activate a brief slow motion at the moment of impact. Now we're getting somewhere. At this point, I realized my fear of making a decent animation has held me back a bit. I still wasn't ready to face my fears, so what I did instead is animate the pose to get blasted back at the point of impact, while also animating the point light to get super bright and then even more bright for one frame of the impact. And now my scene feels way more punchy and weighty. I am loving it. I wanted to push the moment of impact even further, so I decided to take a risk and try something I learned over the weekend. If you look at a lot of slow motion explosions in real life, there's often a massive rippling shockwave that shoots out from it. I wanted to try and recreate that. I created a new material that uses something called refraction to bend the light of anything that passes through it. It was pretty simple to set up and made a pretty cool effect. It's sort of like if you look through a glass bubble, that's what it would look like. Then I took my glass bubble and animated it so that it expanded quickly away from the energy ball. And then I added a few tweaks, some simple sound design, and...